Welcome to the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Boy. That's me, Tiberius. Today we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a cool video game to talk about a fantastic book that was sent to the author book, which will be published marks first. My bone score report, and we got a totally awesome guest. The one, the only, retired chef, Kevin Barry. Mr. Barry has served our community for over 40 years in law enforcement. Thank you for being my special guest. Tiberius, I'm uh, pr- very proud to be here and looking forward to this show. Today we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and this is going to be a good one. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Strike Global Offensive. So last month, my producer Pierre told me that his favorite game went free to play. Most games cost a lot of money. Sometimes a game ha- that has been f- around for a while will go free to play. This allows a lot more players to join and make it fun for those that did pay for the game so they have more people to play with. But this game is not a kid's game. I'm only allowed to play with my dad and Pierre. Not only this is a fun game, it's based on the Steam platform. This game is so popular, it is not only for PC, but Mac and Unix as well. I can tell you that uh, this game is uh, played quite a bit over in Afghanistan. From the Marines to Special Ops guys, when they're off, they're playing these uh, uh, video games. Since I was over there for six years, I, uh, I realized what was going on. Wow. So to start, you are presented with a number of type games. I am only allowed to play does, the map does too. And when you enter the game, you are offered two options to play. You can play on the terrorist side or the counter-terrorist side. I always play the counter-terrorist side. So I can stop the bad guys. You spawn with a random firearm and join your team. If you are smart, you will stay with your team and work together. When you shoot your firearm, the game the game accounts for what you are doing at the time. If you are running and jumping, you will miss more often. If you are walking and standing, still you you will be more accurate. If you squat, your aim will be perfecto. So the goal is to stop the terrorist and get more points than the other team. You gain points for each kill and assist, but you get more points for headshots. After a certain amount of the time, the game ends and the team with the most kills wins. When you get to the stats screen, which shows your individual score, you are ranked by your score so everyone can see who is the best. And and I can tell you that it's good to have games like this, and it does have... uh a purpose for training and all. Some of the SWAT training now is going very virtual. Active shooter incident management is something that I teach throughout the country, and we are now into virtual reality computer games. Uh, in real time, uh, SWAT responses, helicopter responses, and things like that. I really enjoyed the game, but when cheaters get in, it ruins the game because he kills everyone through the walls and runs them out on the map very fast. And I I wish there was a way to stop the cheaters from getting into the game, but when they are not there, it is a lot of fun. I, I like playing with Pierre, my dad, because we can work together as a team. Sometimes I even get more points than my dad. Pierre is really good, so I have not beat his score yet. He usually is in the top three on the stats board. I give Counter-Strike Global Offensive 8 out of 10 stars. I really enjoy being allowed to play this game. It is a lot of fun, but I don't like the cheaters that get into the game. I really enjoy shooting and stopping the bad guys. The Type View Show would like to thank one of our dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom Braille ADA signs, 
final lettering to trophies and awards. They can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373. Over 40 years, Playhouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact White House Central Florida at 407-898-2483 or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org. The Type Beard Show would like to thank one of our awesome sponsors, SlutChannelUS.com. These guys are very, very cool. They bring 21st century surface drainage solutions to reality. They can do corporate and government work. These are the guys that make roads and bridges safe in the rain. You can see all about them at SlotChannelUS.com. That website again is SlotChannelUS.com. And now we're all ready for the Book of the Week. The Unofficial Guide to Minecraft Survival. This book was written by Linda Zack. Remember we did the back of the book. In fact, Mr. Barry, would you do the honor? I absolutely will. In Minecraft, survival depends on having the right resources to stay healthy and protect yourself from dangerous monsters. Minecraft gamers need to think quickly, plan ahead, and have a good strategy in place to make sure that they survive. What resources should a Minecraft player gather first? Which tools are the most important to create? This is a great book about Minecraft. I am so happy to be the first person in the world to be able to review this book because it will still be published March 1st. And Mrs. Linda Zack sent me the book and I read it the same day. It is so awesome. I have played Minecraft a lot, but I always play in creative mode so I don't die. But this book tells you about all the basics. It talks about the zombies and creepers that attack you, as well as, as, well as to how to collect resources and craft new tools and weapons to defend yourself with. And I learned how to create a shelter and make a door to close it in. Then I learn how to, about night when all the zombies come out. And that that the night is only seven minutes. The cool part is I got to see how to cook resources and turn them into different things. I even got to read about Dan TDM, who I used to love to watch on YouTube. After I read the book, I have started to play Minecraft in survival mode and should review the game next week on the show. I give this book 10 out of 10 stars. I think it is cool that I get to be the first person to read this book. And it was really a nice book that made it easy for me to be able to play in survival mode. I think all parents should buy their kids this book. March 1st. Today's guest is going to be a lot of fun. Retired Sheriff Kevin Barry has been in law enforcement professional for 42 years. His family has been in law enforcement for five generations. He was a sheriff for four terms. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I'm enjoying this. This is a lot of fun because it's a lot more fun to be on the show than uh, uh, of your radio show because it's ongoing and it's moving and we're doing different things. Where on normal radio, a lot of times uh, you're having to stick, to stick to scripts and everything's so serious. So I'm having a good time. So why did you go into law enforcement? Actually, I got into law enforcement because I always wanted to be a baseball player. I was a pretty good catcher in high school, but I had a friend who was about ready to commit suicide, and I walked in on him years ago, and uh, that's the day my life changed, and I was going to do something about it, and I became a law enforcement officer. So what is suicide? Well, suicide is when people are depressed, and they don't uh, feel good about themselves, and they talk about uh, killing themselves. Uh, when I walked in on my uh, friend, we were very good friends, and uh, he uh, he sur- he didn't hurt himself, and 
has been very successful and I'm very proud of that. And I uh, am very proud of uh, following the family tradition. So what is the best part about being a sheriff? Well, I think the uh, best part of being the sheriff is one, I had almost 3,000 employees. So uh, you're the spokesperson for those people and they go out here and do a wonderful job and they continue to do a wonderful job. And uh, I was lucky because I came through the ranks. I, uh, I understood what it was like to be a law enforcement officer. I got my initial start in the Melbourne Police Department over on the coast and came to the Sheriff's Office, went back and was the SWAT commander for Kennedy Space Center uh, during the shuttle launches, came back and ran for Sheriff and won, and then retired. And it, then for my, just for funs and giggles, I went to Afghanistan and spent six years there. So what is the difference from being a police officer and being a sheriff? Well, uh, a police officer's jurisdiction is in the cities that they represent, whereas a deputy sheriff can go into the cities but also can go throughout the entire county and enforce the law. But the bottom line is uh, everybody needs to work together to make our communities safe these days. My dad taught me about gun safety and what to do if I, cost, if I come across a gun. What would you tell my listeners who have not been trained to do if they encounter a gun? Well, the, what we always teach is to don't touch it. You keep everybody away from it. Somebody gets on the phone and gets, gets the law enforcement en route and or a, a parent. And uh, because I, uh, we've had accidents happen when uh, young people pick up guns and they go off and people get hurt. Just keep an eye on it. Stay away from it. Call law enforcement. Call an adult. So what do you want kids that listen to the show to know about how to interact with the police? Well, the police are here to help. You know, I, I, one of the things I always got a kick out of is you'd have a kid acting up at a Walmart or something like that, crying and fussing, and you'd walk in in uniform, and the parents would say, you better, he's here for you. And, you know, if you don't, you don't stop crying and acting up, uh, you know, we're going to let him take you to jail. And what I started doing after years and years of just letting it go, I said, no, your, your mom and dad need to take care of you. And, uh, you know, we're here just to help. My dad says you work with SWAT. What is SWAT and what makes it different? Well, SWAT stands for Special Weapons and Tactics. And, uh, you know, when you were playing your Counter-Strike game earlier, Yep. Uh, Counter-Strike is, you, you kept saying, teamwork is important. Teamwork is important. And uh, uh, on a SWAT team, teamwork is important. You're not an individual. You're in there making sure that you uh, get the job done and stop the threat. And uh, I had the privilege of uh, commanding a SWAT team, not only here in Orange County, but also at Kennedy Space Center for about 13 years. What advice would you give to any of my listeners that wanted to go into law enforcement? Uh, be smart. Don't get in trouble. Don't uh, commit crimes as a, as a youthful offender. Uh, when you get your driver's license, that, is, that does not mean that you're going to go out and get 15 tickets. Uh, stay away from drugs and alcohol. Uh, because all those are uh, situations that kind of uh, get young people into trouble and sometimes messes them up for life and they can't get a good job. I would also, in today's day and time, uh, it's probably not a bad thing to go into the military, get a little experience, and then come out and use your uh, veterans' benefits to get into law enforcement. My teacher said that I would use math every day of my life. Do you still use math every day? Well, in law enforcement, you use math every day because you're looking at the statistics and the number of crimes committed and things like that. Um, but I also will tell you that uh, when you're running an agency of 3,000 people, you've got a comptroller that is making sure you don't run out of money so that you don't have to go back to the county commission and beg for more. <laughs> so uh, budgeting is very important. So what is the difference between a gun and a taser? Well, a gun or a firearm that's on the law enforcement officer's side is considered deadly force. And uh, the taser is less lethal force. 
And let me tell you, uh, Tiberius, that taser is a very interesting situation. It's an interesting piece of equipment because I was getting beat up as sheriff when I was bring, trying to bring him into the schools. And, uh, oh, every time I'd look in the newspaper, I was the no good son of a gun again. But uh, we had a 14-year-old right down, not too far, about 10 minutes from here at Silver Star School, uh, pull a knife on her, on her boyfriend, and she was outside the metal detector. And the deputy confronted her, pulled a gun, because the knife being six, seven feet away. And the uh, uh, deputy called for immediate help. We did not have tasers in the schools then, but they were on the street. Two road deputies ro uh, rolled up to help uh, tase the individual. Knife fell to the ground, nobody got hurt. And the next day in the newspaper, we support Sheriff Kevin Barry and the use of tasers in school. Now that's after I got my butt kicked for about a year. <laughs> but it's uh, kind of funny how uh, things roll around in uh, life. Wow. But uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good tool and it's a good option to, uh, so that you don't have to use a firearm sometimes. Yeah. Pretty much. My grandfather said one time you told your deputies to taser you. Why? Can you tell me that story? Yep, uh, it was one of those things where I had challenged the media. I said you want to, uh, you always want to beat up the sheriff's office for tasers. I challenged them to get tased on television. I didn't have any takers, but I got tased on television. Uh, Sergeant Hopkins at the time, Spike Hopkins, uh, tased me. And uh, he, uh, Tiberius, he made it funny, though. He told me, two things you don't want to do when I tase you. Don't tinkle in your pants, and don't say a nasty word on the way down. And so all I'm thinking about is don't tinkle in your pants. Don't say anything nasty. And, and then when, less than five seconds, I was up and given an interview. So... That, that's my taser story, and I, there used to be a YouTube on it, but I don't know if it's still out there. Oh, it may be. So, do you play video games? What's your favorite one? Well, you're 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 gonna you got me there. I am not a video gamer. I am not. I uh, I think the about the only one that I have ever played is the golf one. You know where you. Uh, I uh, sat in front of a big screen and you just, uh, try, and I didn't play it very well, so I didn't last very long. So what, so when you are not doing law enforcement work, what do you do for fun? Well, I like to do family things, and uh, uh, I've got a grandson who's uh, 13 months old now, it's my first one, so uh, we've had a good time uh, helping raise him, and uh uh, other fun things, I'm, I'm a big fanatic in the gym. I love my, lifting my weights and what have you, so uh, it keeps me young. So do you like board games? Yeah, our family plays a lot of board games, especially we just took a, a family trip to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It rained eight days straight. We never saw the sun until the morning we left, but we made things uh, fun, and we got to spend some quality time. And, of course, we had the one-year-old with us, so uh, we just had a good time. So what is your favorite book? Well, I just say uh, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian, so the Bible is my favorite book. But uh, when it comes to uh, what do I like to read, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Bill O'Reilly's books. Uh, I read a lot of books on General George Patton. He was my childhood hero. And... Uh, I like history, so, you know, the death of Lincoln, the death of uh, John F. Kennedy. Uh, I'm reading one now called The Death of the SS, which is the uh, German Nazi group of uh, uh, stormtroopers and things like that. Like stormtroopers, like Star Wars? Well, the stormtroopers were probably a little nastier than some of the Star Wars stuff. But, uh, uh, you know, I, it, it's funny, my youngest daughter, who's now in college, I, I, I had two sons, two daughters, and none of them were Star Wars or Cars or anything. And then I got it all in one. That last daughter, she's an uh, auto, loves her cars and auto mechanics. She loves tennis. She loves Star Wars. She knows all about all of that. And, uh, and that's what makes life so fun in the Berry household because the kids are so different.
Thank you so much for being my guest. Can, can you stick around for Math Corners? Absolutely. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at OakRidgeGunRange.com. Mid-State Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Mid-State Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. The Tribea Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Air Road Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an air belt and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Get ready, it's time for the Bowling Score Report! I'm with the Scallions on Saturday and I play with Vanessa. I bowled a 128, a 106, and a 131 in the final game. I was feeling really good about my scores. Me and MJ had your pre bowl and they did awesome as well. It was a lot faster because I only had one competitor. Also, Mommy had a special surprise for me that was awesome. After bowling, we got to go to Harry Potter Land for the weekend, and it was so much fun. I even got my own wand. Well, back to bowling. <laughs> if you want to go to the bowling with me, be sure to join me at the Amos Youth League Saturdays at Amos Guys on OBT at 10 a.m. in the morning. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Thank you, Mr. Bear, for helping me with Math Corners. Today we're going to talk about multiplying by 6. Whenever you multiply by 6 it, by an even number, the final digit in the answer will be the same. While the digit is in the tens place, it will be half the digit in the ones place. Example, 6, six times 8 equals 48. So first you take the 6 times 8 and then you put the 8 and then you put it in the ones place for the answer. You take the 8 and then divide it by 2 and then that gives you the 4 and then you put it in the tens place. Giving you the answer of 48. Now it gets a little different when you get to multiply 6 by 10 or more. Let's take 6 times 12. You take the 12 and then you put it in the ones place. So, And then you do the 1 lightly. And then the 2, normal. Then because it is a 2 digit number, you write the tens place number lightly. Then half of it of 12 is 6. Here's the difference. Because the first answer had a 2 digit number, you have to carry the tens and add it to the half. So you would take the and, and then you take the 1 from the 12 and then add it to the 6. And then you get the 7 from the tens place. This gets the answer of 72. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm sure glad you know what you're doing. Tiberius, you're be probably better than me in math. That's why, I had a, that's why I had a comptroller to take care of all the numbers at the sheriff's office. You were the first one that said that. Right. It sounds hard, but you, but you can do this on paper and it looks easy. So you can take 6 times 120 and put this on paper. First write down 120 and in your head divide it by 2. And it is 60, so let's see, 120, and then put the 60 right where the 12 is. So 60 right there. So then, and write it under the 12. Be sure to not to put it under the 0, because that's the one split. <laughs> now add the 12 and the 60, and then you get 72. So plus that, 
so it's 720. And now this is not a way to get away from memorizing your times tables, but it is a great way to check your work or quickly doing six time tables by very large numbers. I like learning about patterns in math. My dad is always showing me cool patterns with math. So Mr. Barry, do you know how to multiply by six in your head? I think a little bit. Six times six, 36. Six times eight, 48. Six times 12, 72. Six times one, 27, 20. Well, that's, that's a good trait to have, Tiberius, is when you think you might have one wrong, go back and check it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Barry, for your help with Matt Corners. And now it's time for Heart of a Lion. We, the Tiberius Show, like living with the heart of a lion. Living with the heart of a lion stands for leadership, integrity, obedience and nobility we asked dr ferret exactly what that means leadership is really about influence leadership is and the way we define it is good leadership is about setting the right example and encouraging other people to do the right thing integrity is about doing right no matter what through life there are a lot of different circumstances that arise and integrity, someone who shows integrity, it doesn't matter what all the external things are, they always choose to do what is right. Obedience is about obeying those who are in authority over you, whether that's a teacher, a boss, a parent, that when you were asked to do something, that you respond with obedience quickly and completely. Nobility is about having respect. It's about carrying yourself with respect and showing respect to others. When you put these four things together, that's Lion Strong. This week we are going to talk about integrity. For me, I think integrity is doing what is right even when no one else is looking. The qualities of integrity are honesty, sincerely, truthfulness, and fairness. Well, this week I was at Harry, I, was, I was at the Harry Potter Lane to celebrate my birthday that is coming up. I got my own wand. There are places around the park that allow you to use the wand and make cool things happen. But everyone wants to do the cool stuff. Even when no one was looking, I could wait my turn and let everyone do their wand spells. And then I would get to do mine. Waiting your turn is very hard for me. Child, so normally I don't have to wait. But when I was on my own, I waited anyway. Even when I did not want to. But it was cool when I when I turned on the water with my wand. Mr. Barry, did you see or use integrity all at all this week? Integrity is very important, and yes, I had to use it. I've got to get ready to go to uh, federal court down in South Florida. So uh, you uh, practice by reading uh, your police reports and those police reports, uh, jo you know, josh your memory so that you know what's going on in the case and it's all about integrity on the uh, witness stand. So integrity is very important in law enforcement and life in general. And that's our show folks, I want to thank the one, the only, retired Sheriff Kevin Barry for being my special guest this week. You have been awesome and i hope we can chat again sometime on another show well thank you tiberius for allowing me to come on and i brought something for you because i was very proud of being the sheriff here in orange county for 16 years i'm giving you what they call a challenge coin it's got the years i served that's the replica of my badge mine was silver and gold because i came from being a deputy and worked my way through the ranks okay. so that's for you and the staff so we appreciate uh, you allowing me to come on and have such a good time today. And be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Boy. The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boy. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green Room manager, Danny Boy. Broadcast associate, James Smith, and your program host, Tiberius Boy. 
Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.